All right, so welcome back to Best Hour of Their Day. Thanks for joining us, Carl. You are in the garage in cold weather, I assume, <laughs> than your attire. Where are you located right now? Uh, I'm in Greenwood, Indiana, just south of Indianapolis, Indiana. Um, Indiana's home to me. And I'm out in the garage because this is where I pack orders for Whiteboard Daily posters. And I, I figured that I would just uh, knock that out at the same time while I'm out here. So I'm very happy to be here. Well, you know, give me a little bit of the tour. Granted, the listeners might not see this. I see a car, but let me see the posters oh. you're talking about. <laughs> so the posters are all right here. Uh, this is like the wrapping paper. These are all of the, uh, the tubes uh, that I, I pack everything. Um, I got my printer over here um, where I, I print. Everything is on Shopify. I'm not sure if you have Shopify, if you use Shopify, but it's like, it's amazing. And Shopify really just, it has everything at your disposal. So, I, you know, pack printing slips, I pack, I do all my postage, everything like right here in this corner of my garage. And uh, I've learned so much uh, in the past six months, really. So I could, I could talk about a lot of stuff, but uh, we'll, we'll save that for later. Well, yeah. So let's dive into it. First of all, the life of an entrepreneur working out of his garage <laughs> at, you know, nearly 10 o'clock at night in Indiana. Everyone wants to you know, be an entrepreneur until it's time to do entrepreneurial type things. Yeah, that's very true. It's uh, the good thing about the entrepreneurial life, I think, is that you find that one thing that you love to do and you realize like it's not work. It's just fun. Like I, I, I think about all the time that I spend drawing whiteboards, doing posters, doing research for coaching cues, like just trying to find good content to share with other people. And I, I and now that I'm in like, this world I think about like man what what would I do with my life what would I do with all this time if I wasn't doing this and um, I just love it it's a passion of mine and I'm so thankful to have this platform to share good quality coaching content with other people well it's like Wayne Gretzky once said find a job you love and you'll never work a day in your life yeah I don't know if that was Wayne Gretzky but someone <laughs> someone like Ben Franklin or something but ben Franklin, it's right it's really cool that you do that. And that's really what I want to talk to you about. You know, you've got this tremendous, I want to say social media presence, but it's far bigger than that called Whiteboard Daily. And I want to hear all about how that got started. I somehow got turned on to it a long time ago. And then you and I started connecting. But if you don't already check it out, maybe as you're listening to this, head over to Carl's Instagram. It's whiteboard underscore daily. And talk to me a little bit how that got started. You're clearly an artist, but I think it wouldn't be what it is today if you were just a good artist. You also have a good understanding of the body. So let's, let's dive into all of that. What, what was day one? When did you start <laughs> your first artistic expression on a whiteboard? Uh, so, well, uh, day one for, inst for Whiteboard Daily or, or day one for like, just kind of drawing stuff. Um, well, let's talk about that. Let's dig yeah. deep into the childhood, you know, <laughs> the memories. Let's get a, let's get deep, find out what type of mom issues you got going on, like all of us. So um, what were you always artistic? Yeah, well, it's funny that you say mom issues because our parents, uh, my, I'm an oldest of three, and my mom, especially my mom, uh, she really promoted and encouraged art. Um, uh, and she's an artist now. She, uh, my, my parents now are enjoying the retired life and they've taken all of the funds that they've saved from buying groceries for three large growing boys and they've turned it in and they, they've built a beautiful studio out in the woods. They, they live in, in Brown County, Indiana, which is very rural, but it's a studio for my mom to do watercolor paintings. She's always been an artist. Uh, my middle brother, he is, he's an industrial designer. He's extremely artistic. Uh, Eric Eagleman, uh, he makes a living uh, drawing. And, and um, so there's no question. Also, my youngest brother, too, extremely artistic. So it definitely runs in our in our family. And I never realized that, you know, drawing stick figures and motion and s movement sequences on a whiteboard is, I guess, considered an art. But I'm just honored to uh, be able to uh, to use the skills that I've gained along the years. Um, and the knowledge that I've picked up from coaching and also just being in CrossFit for 12, 13 years, 
uh, to share the good stuff with other people. So, so when did you realize that this talent you have as an artist could lend itself to the whiteboard as well? So, yeah, so I think it all kind of started. So I'll give you just a really kind of brief, a brief background on me. Um, I played basketball in college. Uh, I graduated from Bellarmine University down in Louisville, Kentucky, and I graduated with a communications degree uh, primarily because I don't, I don't mind getting in front of people and talking. It's fine for me. Um, a little while past, I worked for some marketing agencies. Um, I never really kind of found my niche for that. In 2006, I decided to go back to school and I, I got a degree or I got a teaching certification to teach physical education. Uh, because I've always been an athlete. I always loved teaching uh, movement to other people. It's, it's something that kind of picked up uh, very easily. And I wanted to, you know, kind of pursue that. I was like, oh, let's give that a try. Um, and so I, I only <laughs> ended up only teaching for one year out in Oakland, California. And uh, it was actually, it was exactly that time when I was out in Oakland that I, I was really getting into CrossFit. And that was back in uh, 2007. Um, I was really, well, I, I, I first kind of learned about, uh, CrossFit in 2000, I guess, yeah, 2007. Um, it's you've been a, around, you've been in the game a while. Well, yeah, it's, I, I learned first about it with, um, that movie 300 came out and I, I mean, I think, and you know, if you've been in the game for a while too, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. That's what yeah, I learned windshield about my, wipers and all that yeah. good stuff. Yeah. That we yeah. used to do in that 300 workout. If you're going to work out, yeah. And so I learned about Mark Twite. I learned about Jim Jones and Salt Lake City. And I learned how he was, I guess, kind of a student. Yeah, he was a student of Greg Glassman. So I started to learn about CrossFit. And all of this, like, functional training, uh, just, it was like, wow. Like, like I up until that point, I was, I was one of those gym bros that just kind of, like, carried my jug of water with me and the back and buys and chest and tries and legs. And, and, uh, and I... I had been doing that for so long that I kind of, and you know, when you're doing that stupid stuff, you're like in the gym for like an hour and a half, but you really feel like you're not that athletic. Like I was like, man, when's the last time I actually just like sprinted up a hill or ran? Like you just, you're used to doing very, you know, fixed, like single joint exercises and stuff. And I was like, this is not, this is not how I want to be spending my time. So anyway, I uh, started to learn about CrossFit, dabbled in a little bit. Ended up moving out to Berkeley or Oakland, California. Um, and ironically, that's, I was working out at the Berkeley Rec Sports Facility, Berkeley RSF. And I noticed uh, a guy and a girl over in the corner doing butterfly pull-ups on a rig. And again, let me remind you, this is 2007 with people doing butterfly pull-ups. And I was, or even, and what were the kipping pull-ups? Regardless, like no one was doing that stuff back then. And it turned out it was Savan Matosian. And he and oh, I, wow, that's so cool. Yeah, he and I, we just kind of hit it off and we started to kind of work out together. We, uh, um, there was also a track, there's a dirt track, uh, off of Hopkins Street out in Oakland, or no, it's was, it was still Berkeley, but he would, um, he would get his, he would get his video, uh, gear and, uh, carry, oh, what, uh, I forgot Carrie's last name. Um, back in the day, it was like, it was Savannah and Carrie. I'll think about it later on, but anyway great guys obviously and he would uh video me doing some workouts and so i got the moniker tall carl so if you re if you remember any videos back in the day on the dot com page of tall carl there's tall carl doing double unders there's tall carl doing like a the deadlift burpee workout anyway like and you know this like the dot com site was like it like that's where everybody went and that's, that's right. where the workout of the day was posted and so I remember the first time I got a video posted on the dot com site. I was like, holy smokes, this is like amazing. It's a and big so, deal. I remember, yeah, I remember the first time I was featured on dot com and you're like, yeah. it's like you're a celebrity. Yeah, you're a celebrity because that's, and you know, for our, for the CrossFit cult as, as it grows, you know, back in the day, uh, it's smaller and, and everyone kind of like knows who you are. Anyway, uh, that was just, um, that was a trip. And so, um, I ended up just kind of going full bore into CrossFit. I got my, my level one actually at the ranch in Aromas uh, in 2009, in March of 2009. And, uh, you know, met, and that was with, you know, I met Castro. That was back with uh, Freddie Camacho, Jolie Gentry, Adrian Bosman, Pat Barber, 
Uh, all of those guys were like, they were, sorry, I'm going to turn on, I don't know if you that notification. Anyway, those were the guys that were like doing the course. Uh, Kalipa was out there. Neil Maddox was in my class with me. Um, it was just, I knew that it was something special at the time, but at the, now that I look back, I'm like, man, I'm just like so thankful to have those experiences. And this is back when like the ranch was like, obviously before it went through like all the renovations that it has now. But anyway, so, um, and then, I don't know, it, I can keep on going, but it, it kind of give my history here, but I don't want to like talk too much here. Um, but I'll just keep on going. <laughs> no, you know, it's just really interesting to hear. And I love hearing from people that were around back in the day, because so many people that are probably listening to this podcast, you know, this day and age, you Google CrossFit, there's 20 boxes that you can go to. Where back oh then, gosh. it wasn't like that. It's the same thing. I learned how to do CrossFit by myself in a Globo gym, watching CrossFit.com every day, seeing people that we've had on the podcast, like Greg Amundsen, and yeah. like you mentioned, Freddie Camacho and Adrian Bosman. And yeah. I remember all the videos with Savon. So, you know, that's your introduction, and you're doing great, and you're moving forward. But still, the question is, at what point did you realize, hey, I can draw on this whiteboard? So I want to hear kind of when you started to put the, you know, whiteboard marker to the whiteboard, so to yeah. speak. Okay. And then also yeah. when you decided to start taking that to social media. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So um, I'm going to kind of fast forward here to, and over, during that fast forward, uh, during that time, um, I went back to school Again, I got my master's in kinesiology because I really enjoy human performance. Um, and I was thinking about going into possibly going into ergonomics or sport performance, uh, that sort of thing. Um, and also during that time that I'm kind of fast forwarding over here, living in New Zealand for two years. And during that time I became, uh, I was very honored and blessed to take the job as a general manager for CrossFit Mana uh, in Palmerston North, which is just north of Wellington. So that really was my first dive into actually full-time coaching and you know, all the things that a, that a, a head coach or that a general manager would go through. Yeah. So it, it gave me a really great opportunity to kind of like understand what coaches uh, need as far as good coaching and educational content. Um, so it whiteboard daily, I, I, up until this point, up until 2000, I, I started the account on 2017 of August, August of 2017. And I just, because in my mind, I knew I had some good stuff that I wanted to share that I picked up along the way. Um, and I remember one time, I, this is back in, this is probably back in like 2011 or so, I was working out at a place called Force Fitness and Will Fleming was my coach there. He's a really great Olympic lifter. And I, and I remember he always had some really great coaching cues for me. And one of them, was down like a rock, up like a rocket. And, and it just stuck with me. I was like, whoa, like that's cool. And, and then at that mo moment, and I stuck this back in my mind, but at that moment I was like, oh my gosh, how cool would it be to like have a book where it's just all coaching cues of like whatever movement there is. And I was like, oh, that'd be so cool. And like, you just stick it back in your mind. But that never like really left me. I always wanted to create like some kind of glossary or some kind of like catalog of coaching cues that, that coaches can use because as you know like not every coach or not every athlete is going to respond the same way to a coaching cue so it's nice to have this arsenal of tons of different ways that you can explain movement to somebody so you know and as time went on i, I began to like learn more about uh, the different coaching cues that were i picked up some along the way and then i was like you know what okay I'm going to draw some stuff on a board, just kind of create an account and see what happens. And so that's what I did in August of 2017. I created whiteboard daily. And at the time I really didn't know what I was doing or I didn't really, I don't know. I, I just was like, I was posting, <laughs> it kind of started off with just posting like some cues, some kind of rough rudimentary drawings. Uh, I would post workouts and I post inspirational quotes. Now, if you're. So do you, I don't, I haven't scrolled back far enough. But do you remember the first post you put up? Uh, the first, yeah, I do actually, because I never deleted it. Uh, the first post that I ever put up was a, and I'll give you a story. I was actually in Toronto, Canada for work. And I was, uh, and it's a workout. 
I think it's called Ramada or something like that, but it's a workout that I actually did in the parking lot of a Ramada. And I was like, yeah, I'll just put this up there because it's pretty cool. Um, and so, uh, so, but here's the deal. If, if you are, if you know anything about Instagram, you know that you're going to find like workouts and inspirational quotes is like a dime a dozen. Like, no, like yeah. you, you can find that anywhere. Big deal, right? And so I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I just don't know exactly what I'm doing. So I took a full year off of posting anything. I just, it was like this project that I started. I just didn't want to look at it for a while. Cause I was like, man, I just don't know what exactly where, what direction I want to take. And so I, from August to August, I didn't do anything. And I think June, July, in July of 2018, I was like, okay, I'm going to attack this. I'm going to, I'm going to map out all of my content. I'm going to make like, you know, I'm going to make like a book suggestion on Monday. I'm going to make um, a, a tip on Tuesday. On um, Wednesday, I'm going to do, now I might try the workout again. I'll do like a workout on Wednesday. So I mapped out a full month of content ahead of time. And I had a calendar and I, I like wrote all of my content like each day in the calendar ahead of time to kind of like get ready to like kind of ramp this thing back up. Well, I did that and I stuck with it. And then I noticed that like the, the stuff that people really love were like the coaching cues. And I was like, and that's the same stuff that I loved to do. So it just kind of fit hand in hand. And I remember I was doing this for a while and, you know, it started to grow. And I think probably around the time when I hit maybe like 5,000 followers or something like that, my wife was like, this is really cool. But like, what are you going to do when like when you run out of coaching cues or what are you going to do when you run out of stuff to say? And I was like, well, so far I haven't run out of anything. And and here, here we are, um, I'm 15, 14 or 15 months into consistently posting one, at least one good piece of content every st single day. And as you know, like it's just, there's so much stuff out there that I, I, I got a feeling I can keep it going for a very long time. But where do you get this creative outlet? Not, not the outlet, but where, where does some of these ideas come from now that you have done 365 plus posts. I mean, uh, yeah. I agree with you. You'll never run out of cues from the simple ones like knees out to chest up, but yeah. you're digging deep on some of these. I mean, <laughs> if, if, if someone goes through your Instagram now, we can talk about, you know, you got your rowing one about the drive and recovery that, you know, and this is great stuff because so many of these are just overlooked. And I think it's like Fern and I talk about all the time. We know them, but the average yeah. new coach might yes. not. Certainly yes. the members don't know. I mean, I've told members, you know, these simple cues, like, like let's use that one for example, that recovery, and their mind is blown. Like, oh my God, you're the smartest man alive. I'm like, no, <laughs> I just happen to know a little bit about a yeah. little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's, I, okay. So again and i i know that we're kind of speaking on the same terms i know you know trust me you are level four you've traveled the world teaching level ones and levels whatever like your knowledge is i bow down to your knowledge but go on I'm keep, saying, keep talking about that do me a favor <laughs> but what i'm talking about is this it's like like you and i we both know driving recovery okay on the rower whatever but you got to remember there's a billion people out there that still have no idea what it is so I like for my, my full-time job, I travel a lot. And when I'm traveling, I know it's going to sound existential and kind of crazy, but like I'll look down at all, whenever I'm in the, in the air flying and look down, I'm like, Oh my gosh, like there are millions and millions and millions of people out there. And you really realize like how many people out there still don't still need the, the, basic cues that you and I take for granted. And so I'll take some stuff that I feel is like just baby steps and people are like, Whoa, yeah, that's, that's like genius. And I'm like, if you think so, but it's just like, it's just common, common verbiage that you and I would say. And it's, I think what it is is to be able to put it in a different medium of rather than having a coach say it, or even watching a video of somebody doing it, but to actually, make it break it down so simple to like a stick figure on a whiteboard people are like okay like thank you that makes sense to me and i'm like geez i'm just honored to be able to provide a different way for people to consume other information that they might be getting from somebody else well and um, i think you're bringing I was, up 
you're bringing up two really valuable lessons here. One, if you're listening to this and you're a coach, keep it simple. Yes. You know, we sometimes we forget we're so deep into this and we might get, you know, the catch, the recovery or, you know, triple extension, but your members just need to hear jump or squeeze your butt. You know, Coach Bergner said a great, when we had him on, he was when one of his girls just said, well, shit, coach, just tell me to jump. Yep. And, you know, we, we try to make these things so complicated um, that it, it's, it's really cool to just see that it could be simple and, and, and really still touch people. And then in addition to that, you know, when we talk about cueing, there's verbal, there's visual and tactile. And what you're yep. doing so well is nailing the people that have, that learn best visually. Yep. Exactly. Because you, know, you don't do that a lot at the box. You, you know, you get verbal cues, you, you get tactile cues, and you'll do some visual cues. But there's a difference, I would say, in that visual cue from like, hey, I'm showing you in front of you to, hey, no, look at this poster or look at this picture. And that's going to make sense. So it's just a whole nother avenue of, of cueing. Um, another question about that to you is, do you get more positive feedback about the art or about the knowledge within the art? <clears throat> that's a really good question. Um, I think what it is, is that I'm, I'm going to say it's equal. Um, I'm going to say it's equal because uh, a lot of times people, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think a lot of coaches are extremely appreciative to provide like some of the drawings that I put out there because you know, they're busy doing a, B and C and they're like, Oh, remember guys, we were talking about this yesterday. And so here's like, remember when I told you to, you know, uh, engage your core or, you know, take the clunk out like that one coach, the one post I did, I think yesterday, I know how busy coaches are because I've been one and I still do coach. And then, so it's like, it's a way for me to be like, listen, I know you're busy. So let me take care of this stuff so you can focus on the other stuff. And then you can share this with your people if it's valuable to you, you know what I'm saying? So I wouldn't necessarily say it's like people are like, whoa, the artwork is so awesome because honestly, I feel like it's just, it's just stick figure drawings. It's very simple drawings. Um, but that's but I like, think people like the simplicity. Exactly. I was just about to say the sim the, the fact that you can take stick figures and make them so educating, but also so artistic is really impressive, especially coming from someone like myself who has gotten critiqued for their poor drawing of stick figures on the <laughs> whiteboard at level one and level two seminars. So it's really cool. What's your favorite one that you've ever done? My favorite one that I've ever done. I'm actually, I'm looking at the, I did a poster called just recently. I did a poster called the perspective poster. And what I did is I took the top six posts because I'll do coaching cues. I'll do coaching education. I'll do coaching perspectives. Uh, I've kind of categorized them into different types of posts. And this is um, a coaching perspective. I took, all, I took the six best coaching perspective posts that I've ever done. And there's one that's called, you bully the bar, don't let the bar bully you. And it's a stick figure who's like flexing with his foot on a bar. And it makes me think about like how, when you are lifting, like, it's so easy in your daily life to kind of feel like you're bullied by work or traffic or your bills or whatever. And like lifting, Olympic lifting is like your one time when you not only should you, but, or not only can you, but you should like be aggressive and you bully the bar, you put the bar into place. And that was something that kind of came to me. Um, you know, when I was coaching, I was like, listen, you gotta, you gotta bully that bar. You gotta put it into place you own it. Right. And so I drew up that stick figure. And I think that's the first one, the first perspective piece that people really, uh, I think they really identified with. And I actually, I know they really identified with because that's the first time uh, somebody actually took one of my drawings and they, and they uh, put it on a t-shirt themselves. And they sent me a picture of like my picture on a t-shirt that they had printed because they, they identified with it so much. And I was like, wow okay this is really and and they were like i think overseas somewhere and i was like this is really special to me to, that was, somebody actually with it was that when you decided hey i can actually turn this into a business 
Um, I, okay. So here's the deal. Like I, this is my passion and this is like what I love to do. And I feel like I'm pretty good at it and I want to make it a living and I want to monet, like, I, you got to monetize it, right? You got to like, you can't just live off likes. <laughs> yeah. 123,000 followers, followers it, you know? don't pay the bills. <laughs> Right. And so you kind of find ways it's of, of providing opportunities for people to support you. And so I think the first thing, Oh, the first thing I did was uh, t-shirts. Uh, there's a, a fundraising platform called bonfire and all you do is you, it's zero overhead. All you have to do is just take a, a picture, a drawing and you select the apparel, you select the colors, you select the sizes, all that stuff. And you even select the price point. And then you just put it out there for people to, to purchase. And if they want to buy it, they can buy it. And then you just get, you get a, they also take care of the drop shipping too. And they take care of the printing, the drop shipping, all that stuff, which is enormous. But on the, on the opposite side, because they're doing all that stuff, you get like a super duper small cut. Like I might make like three or four bucks per shirt. Um, and the shirt might sell for like, 27 30 bucks or something like that so it's like you're not going to be you know buying groceries with that but at least it's a start you know it's at least it's a, an opportunity for people to um you know to support you some way somehow and i remember the first shirt that really took off was the snatch shirt that i did like i did this uh, snatch movement sequence and man people just loved it i was like this is so cool because i love it i, I was like this is pretty cool to me like I, I dig it and um i was like you know what i need to make this a shirt and sure enough i did it and it really just took off and so thankfully i took the profit from that and the profit went straight into the first round of posters that i ever did and i launched the posters as soon as i and it was cool because i was able to time the poster launch with me hitting 100k and so i even did like a pre sale for the first 100 people uh, could uh, buy a, a snatch poster at a, a lower price and then that helped me fund more poster sales or more, more poster purchasing in the future so um, how do you decide how do you decide which ones you're gonna turn into a poster or a t-shirt um, a lot of it just goes on response it's nice because Instagram provides like market feedback like right there in front of you uh, if something really is if people really identify with a certain post, you're going to know like right off the bat. Um, and so a lot of times what I'll do is like, I will look at the things that I think are cool or posts that I think that are provided some good value, value to people. And then I see if they've got a good response from the public. And then if it is, then I, I make that a poster. So, I mean, I've only got four posters right now and I do have two or three more uh, in my mind that I just need to take the time to, to do that are coming up. They're pretty excited about, um, what, man, what changes. Just, uh, so all of the posts that you put up there are done on a whiteboard. Yes. And then you take a picture of it. Yes. What changes then to make it into a poster that you can sell? Uh, I do some more Photoshop. Um, to the picture I take out, you know, I just clean it up and make it look nice and pretty and crisp. Uh, take out any other spots. And then I, um, I send that to the printer and then if it looks good from the printers in, uh, then they put it on a poster. So it's, it's, it's a pretty smooth, uh, smooth sequence there. I ju it just takes some clicking and some time to kind of zone out on Photoshop. How, how long does the average drawing take you? The average drawing takes me, I, I, it's so funny. I've got my routine. Uh, you know, our kid, we've got an eight and a half year old. Oh, no, she's, she's actually far beyond eight and a half. She's turning nine next month. Uh, you know, once she goes to bed and it's kind of quiet around the house, then I'll sit down with my whiteboard and 20 minutes, maybe. Here's the deal. Like the larger the audience has grown, it's like, I got to make sure that I got good valuable like yeah i gotta make sure pre presentation is up there so recently what i've been doing is that because like i would have some good coaching cues in the back actually today's a perfect example the one i posted today was a uh, get tall the before clean. you get small right. yeah the clean and i posted that one well over well over a year ago 
um, but it was a really poor drawing. And you know how it is. Like when you practice anything, the more you do it, the better you get. And I was like, I got to up, up the game on that one. And so I redrew it. And um, boy, that one got kind of popular today too. So um, the whiteboard you're drawing on, originally you probably started on a substantial whiteboard like at a box. What are you drawing on these days? What's the size of the whiteboard? Um, gosh, I should probably go get it for you, but it's, it's nothing fancy. And actually the very first whiteboard. So I don't know about you, but like in your box, but, and I had one of these laying around first off, like members like to write stuff down and you don't like chalk on the mats. And so you get like, you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you take some shower board and you cut it into yeah. squares. $12. And, yeah. And so that's what. Board. Yeah, and so I had the very first ones. If you look back, you might see that they're actually square. And so, dude, no lie, for like the first, I think all the way, here's the crazy thing. Probably up until the point I had like 50,000 followers, every single drawing was done on like a, a 16 by 16 square shower board. And that's all it was. Like, that's small. all that I, yeah, small. And just like whiteboard markers, that's all I had. And you can also notice on those older ones that there was actually a, spot where the shower board had been chunked out and so that black spot showed up on every single drawing way back in the day you gotta kind of scroll back but you might find it oh yeah i and see so it last, now yeah <laughs> and so um i remember that's last cool. that's, christmas that's the reality <laughs> right and so i remember christmas time last year you know mom's like what do you want for christmas and i'm like man anything to help me grow a whiteboard daily more and so she got me a legit whiteboard um that the one I draw on now, and it's probably like I'm trying to measure it out. I don't know. It's probably like 18 by 24. Yeah. It's probably maybe a little bit it's, bigger. It's, it's really cool. You know, for the listeners go on again, follow whiteboard underscore daily, by the way, who has whiteboard daily? We got to do something about that. Oh, um, Oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we can talk about that later. Uh, I, I don't oh. think, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if anybody has that on, maybe they do. But we can talk about copywriting and trademarking because I'm trying to, I'm actually get, entering that world right now. Um, trying to get, um, which is kind of interesting. Well, I'm Googling whiteboard daily and it's someone with 53 followers, not quite at what you're up to. Um, so, well, and they don't have any posts. Well, the, the they, underscore, underscore is kind of who I am nowadays. So, yeah, you got to keep that. You, you've got your brand now. But, you know, it's really cool. Like I was saying to the listeners, go back and kind of search through. And it's, it's just cool to see. I love seeing entrepreneurs grow and their journey, no different than CrossFit. And you can yeah. see it. I mean, you, go, you can see how it, it went from, hey, I just throw up a workout or I put a quote to like really well thought out pictures. How often are you erasing on these pictures? <laughs> uh, the more, well... I don't is it, know, man. I, I, is I do. it getting to the point that you're so nervous about <laughs> your following no. that, and your and your and you're you're living up to this great expectation you've set that it's getting, you know, almost like perfection is the opposite of great. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I it's a good feeling to know that I never get nervous about anything. I I never I do the only time I kind of redraw like erase and redraw stuff is for spacing. Um, uh, yeah, I really, I, and I just, because I want something to like look legit, I want it to look like it's, you know, it's, it's worth following. Um, I, I will say sometimes if I, I double check, triple check, quadruple check stuff, content, if I don't exactly know for sure what a movement like a point of performance might be because I want to make sure I'm providing the best stuff. I don't want to like halfway. Well, I don't want to draw somebody that's not. You can, you can hit up one of 50 level four coaches in the world, you know, and ask me if you ever have any questions about that. But, I will, but, man, for sure. but yeah. speaking of that, you know, if you go through, I really, really like your recent one. You have to put your life into the bar. It's from my yep. friend, Austin Maliolo. I see quotes from other friends of mine, like Alex Zirkenbach, yeah. uh, you know, adapting is not scaling. What's really obviously non-existent is quotes from me 
and from best hour of their day. I don't understand. I say a lot of really profound things on this show. Yeah. Fern says, you know, I understand not having any Fern quotes, but I don't understand not having any quotes by me. I, What's going don't. on there, Carl? Please don't take that personal at all, my friend. You and I, we just kind of got each other, got to know each other. This is a, the beginning of a beautiful relationship. Oh, we're dating. I see. I don't, yeah. you know, I don't date very long. I go right to the bedroom, ask my wife. Yeah. So, no, don't okay. ask her. Yeah. Don't ask her about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we need to get a best hour of their day. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, poster out there, maybe. We'll yeah. throw it out there. We'll promote it. Go support Carl. But what you're doing is 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 really great. How's the support from your wife? Uh, support from my wife is awesome, especially you know now that I'm really starting to like get some traction. You know, it's like she sees my passion for this. She is uh, she's pursuing her own like she's she's a, a yoga teacher, but she's also pursuing her muscle activation technique um, certifications as well. She's and so we support each other in these kind of ventures. Um, you know, when you uh, work in the, in that realm, you kind of, you have to be an entrepreneur. You have to think about being your own businessman and, and growing your own business. And so I support her fully and she supports me fully. And, and um, you know, we cheers quite often to like, to our own ventures. So it's, uh, it's, I'm very thankful for that support for sure. Do I see a, you know, yoga whiteboard daily coming in the near future? Uh, you might not see that, but I have, I've tossed around, I, one of, there was one post that I never got around to doing. Um, I drew it up and everything, and it was a yoga poses in weightlifting, and it was like. That's cool, I like that. It, it was a cross, I, I'll dig it up, um, and I might redo it, but like, you know how you would do like a high lunge in yoga? Well, I would, <clears throat> I would compare that to be similar, not exactly to, a you know, split. like a split jerk, right? Yeah. Um, there's one, you know, like. Uh, a, you squat in yoga. Uh, there's one that's like, there's, there's different movements that are very similar. They kind of have a crossover. And so I wanted to like, uh, ex I wanted to communicate the similarities of how like a weightlifter could benefit from some of the stuff that, that people do in yoga. So I'll have to dig it back up, but she, I, I was going to quote her and I think we got hung up on like, she was trying to figure out exactly like what kind of quote she could give me. And, I moved on to something else. Well, so, yeah. yeah. Well, that's so cool, Carl. We're really excited to share this again. I've said it a few times, but check out Carl whiteboard underscore daily, and then go buy one of his posters, buy one of his t-shirts, support, support him. You're putting out some great stuff and, you know, we appreciate the, you know, linking up with you and I hope that we can create something cool together. And of course, like I said, if you ever have questions on points of performance, faults, Anything you need to know, I'll be here for you. Hey, trust me, for sure. Uh, I'm very honored. I, 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 did, I didn't say this ahead of time, but honestly, I'm very honored to be on the show. Um, I, hold, uh, I hold level four. I hold level three. I hold other CrossFit trainers in the highest regard, and it's, it's very um, – it, it means a lot to me to be identified as, as providing good content for other people. I've got some big-time plans. I feel like – I'm just getting started with all of this. I'm very excited about the future. Um, I do, before we go on, you, you talked about the t-shirts and posters, and this really isn't about any kind of like monetary money-making anything. This is just something that I started uh, that I think is really cool. And I think it ex really be a benefit to coaches specifically. Um, remember when I was talking about that book, that the book of cues? Well, what I did is that I, I've created the whiteboard daily glossary and it's, it's a subscription based page on my website, whiteboarddaily.tips. And the links are in uh, the bio of my Instagram. And I've got like a, a, a sample page where people can check out. And actually um, I've, I've been providing, if, if you can provide me with, and this, when I say you, it's a collective you. If anybody can provide me with good constructive criticism, uh, um, I've been, providing a, a month subscription to the full glossary and the full glossary has every single piece of content that I posted on whiteboard daily categorized by movement and then categorized by sports. And then it's also categorized by perspective or educational piece. Anything that I've ever posted on whiteboard daily is categorized. So you can find exactly what you're looking for within seconds. So if you're a coach and you are going to be coaching 
uh, the squat later on today. Well, you could go to whiteboarddaily.tips and go to the glossary and you can, within two clicks, you could have 10 cues that you could provide your athletes with uh, for, for just the squat or whatever movement that you're doing. Um, so Jason, after we get off here, I'll, I'll, um, I'll get your information and then I'll, I'll, I'll send it your way so you can actually check it out what I'm talking about. Like I said, there's a sample glossary, but the, the full one is just growing big time. It's really, it's a really cool piece. Cool. Well, but yeah, I definitely love to check that out. And for, you know, four ninety eight a month, you know, if you're a coach, bypass Starbucks once, you know, don't go double yeah. meet at Chipotle one time. And you, you've got all these coaching cues right at your disposal and in an easy to digest way. So that's really cool. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. I'm sure, yeah, for sure. you know, I'll learn something, you know, despite any training I have, I'm a firm believer that you can always learn something. So even if it's just yeah. something cool to say when, when you're coaching or, you know, yeah. a different perspective on it, I'm really excited. That's really cool, Carl. So thanks for that. And again, I appreciate you being on here. It's like cold and late in Indiana. So I will let you go. I'll let you get to a, the next piece that you're going to create some yeah. sort of some sort of best hour piece I'm assuming <laughs> is coming out and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll collaborate for sure. We'll, we'll collaborate. I appreciate that. Well, Carl, any, anywhere else people can check you out. You're, you're primarily on Instagram. You got your link tree set up. So if you want to order a poster, a t-shirt, you know, check out the glossary. That's all right there from his Instagram. And like I said, when people are doing good for the community, I highly recommend we go back and support them. So thanks for all you do, Carl. Hey, I'm honored, Jason. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Best Hour of Their Day. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. First of all, it's free. How cool is that? There's a creation tool that allows you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer, so it becomes super simple. Some of these episodes with Fern or Todd or myself chatting with one another, we've done right within the app itself. Anchor will make it easy to distribute your podcast to all platforms, Spotify, Apple, and many more. And you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make an awesome podcast in one place. All you have to do is download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started today. Come on, who doesn't have Spotify at this point? And if you were unaware, Spotify now is offering podcasts. That's right. On Spotify, you can listen to all your favorite artists, but also podcasts in one place for free. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now, best hour of their day. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Premium users can even download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, something I always do before I hop on a plane. And you can even easily share what you're listening to with your friends on Instagram and other social media platforms. Here's the deal. If you haven't done so already, be sure to download the Spotify app, search for best hour of their day on Spotify, or browse some other podcasts if you want. You can find them in your library tab. And also make sure to follow me so you never miss an episode of best hour of their day. Thanks again for listening to best hour of their day. We hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did one more time, please leave us a review on Apple podcast and send us any feedback you have to at best hour of their day on Instagram and best hour of their day at gmail.com. If you want to shoot us an email, we appreciate you. Thanks again. Have a great rest of your day.